So you're wondering what the true cost of living is for Springfield, Missouri and the surrounding areas? Well, today in this video, we're going to discuss the six top categories that will most likely have the biggest impact on your budget. And I will also share with you my favorite tools and resources to help my clients make the final decision to call Springfield, Missouri their home. If you've never met before, my name is Natalie Resnick and I make videos just like this about Springfield, Missouri. What it's like to live here, to play here, to work here, the pros and cons. And I'm also a licensed realtor and I am the team leader of the Resnick Real Estate Group here in Springfield and we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate and invest in Springfield, Missouri. Now, the six categories that we are going to be talking about today in this video are going to be groceries, housing, utilities, transportation, healthcare costs, as well as taxes, because these are the six main categories that have the biggest impact on your budget. Now, in any area, the cost of living can vary based on factors such as your career, its average salary, and the real estate market, which is sometimes one of the biggest factors. With that being said, Springfield, Missouri's cost of living is 13% lower than the national average. That means that it is 13% more affordable than any other area in the United States. A quick overview about Springfield, Missouri is that it is the third largest city in the state of Missouri following St. Louis and Kansas City, both located in North Missouri. Springfield is located in the southwest region of Missouri and has a population size of 169,000 within the city. However, its population in the greater Springfield metropolitan area is just under half a million coming at 487 and that's the total for the census in 2022 and the counties that are included in Springfield area are going to be Dallas County, Polk County, Christian County, Webster and Green County itself. First on our list is going to be groceries because at one point or another you and I are going to get hungry and we're going to want to eat and with that we're going to have to go buy some groceries. The good thing is that according to research, Springfield, Missouri has a cost of groceries that is 4% lower than the national average, which is a good thing because let's be clear, every little thing adds up and has an impact on our budget, especially food, which is a non-negotiable and there's always a cost each month. So with that said, you do have to consider your lifestyle when it comes to eating. Do you like to go out a lot or do you eat at home? Do you buy pre-made food even though it's from a grocery store or do you like to cook from scratch? Do you buy in bulk or do you just buy enough? Do you have a certain diet or a certain food preference such as buying organic or maybe that's not a big deal for you? Also where you shop, do you go to a store that's considered more luxury but it has extra services? Do you stop by many different stores to find the best deals in town? Do you buy from the farmer's market or do you maybe stock up on your meat from the local producers, local farms? Do you go hunting, you know, in Springfield, Missouri, we have a very big deer population and hunting season in the fall is a big deal here. And quite a few Missourians, you know, like to have an extra freezer or two in their, in their garage and store their meat from deer and other animals such as turkey. I think that's a big deal here. There's also what's known as waterfall season and that's duck or goose. That's also, I believe, in the fall, actually September 9th to April 30th. Those things can make an impact on your grocery bill and how much it will cost for you to live here because maybe you can change up the way you spend money on food here so if you're coming from a city maybe you do not have access to the hunting it might be quite a distant away and its own added cost and might not make sense another thing to consider is your family size for myself um, i have three growing boys that are very wild don't sit still and their appetites are only getting bigger every day as they get older for example i'm um, with my kiddos and being a working mom who's always on the go, every month my grocery bill is about $1,200. That's gonna be on a low end, I'd say, because there's months where we need to buy other necessities like in bulk and they might add to our grocery bill, but they compensate for the next month. 
Another thing is that I typically do not like to eat out. I like to eat healthy food, home cooked food. So that makes an impact on my budget. And then I also like convenience where it does save time for me to go to one or two groceries instead of visit quite a few across town and spend my day grocery shopping. So I would rather pay a little more and be done with groceries for that week. So that is just something that has been my experience in Springfield. Another awesome thing about groceries in Springfield is that we are surrounded by lots of house pastures. There's lots of dairy farm, beef farms. There's also people who sell fresh eggs and stuff like that. And sometimes those prices are better than they are in the store. One thing I do is like, I love raw milk. I think there's lots of benefits to it. And my preference is to buy milk straight from the farm that's been milked that day um, versus milk that's been sitting in the cooler of a grocery store. So I actually have to add that to my grocery list now that I think about it because it is another item that I buy, but I don't add it to my grocery trip to the store. So you can definitely find your stores here and some places are cheaper than others. It just really depends, you know, on what you want to do. So with that being said, Springfield is a little lower than the national average, which is a good thing. We don't have big stores like Whole Foods. We do not have Trader Joe's. So keep that in mind if you do come from an area and where your lifestyle <laughs> included Trader Joe's, that could change for you. You might have to really like figure out your new way of shopping for groceries, but we do have amazing grocery stores like all these highly price cutter, Carter House, which are known for their great meats. Walmart Walmart. We have quite a bit of Walmarts and the groceries there are actually not that bad and they are one of the more affordable places to go shopping. We also have Costco. In the last few years, we finally got a Costco here and then we also have two Sam's Club locations. So definitely quite a bit of variety where you can go grocery shop and where you can work on your grocery budget. Next on our list is going to be housing because just like groceries, everyone needs a home. The amazing thing is that according to research, the cost of a home in Springfield, Missouri is 25% lower than the national average. That means that buying a home is 25% more affordable in Springfield. And if you take a step back, and look at some statistics that are provided by Radfin. And these are statistics for September 2023, so not too long ago. The cost of a medium home in the United States is going to be around $413. And the medium cost of a home in the state of Missouri is $258,000. And the best part is that the medium cost of a home in Springfield, Missouri is right at $250,000. That is quite a difference and we're going to take a look at my screen here and I'm going to go over some statistics for the greater Springfield area. This is going to um, include the counties such as Green County which is for the city of Springfield and we're going to have Christian County, Webster County, Polk and Dallas all counties that do make up um, the greater Springfield area. And so we're gonna look at the statistics for January, 2024. I'm making this video in early February. So this is for last month, the beginning of 2024. And let's see, so total units sold for the greater Springfield area is gonna be 341. And we're gonna look at the medium price here, which as stated, stated before is gonna be $250,000. And that is gonna be for this year, okay? But that can also vary depending on where you buy in the greater Springfield area. If you are within the Green County, you're, the medium price drops a little full and it's at 235,000. Christian County is a little higher. It's a little more pricier. And that includes areas like Ozark, like Nixa, parts of Republic and that comes at $275,000. And we also have Webster County, which is East Springfield and that includes um, Rogersville and Stratford and let's see, so Webster County for January to uh, 2024 comes at a, a lower price of $185, although 
I think that might be a little hard to find because the population on that side of Springfield um, is going to be much lower and there's less housing there. So just something to keep in mind. So we're going to go over here to Forbes where we found the medium price of a home in the United States in September 2023 and this is a fun website to compare the cost of home prices across each state. These are organized by alphabetical order. We're going to go down to Missouri. Here's where Missouri lands. Montana. That's surprising. I actually moved from California. I lived in the Sacramento County as well as Placer County, which is right next to that. That's located in Northern California. But let's look at California to compare to what it is in Missouri. Look at that. That is more than double, almost, what is it, triple? Wow. Then the cost of a medium home in Springfield, Missouri, it comes at $787,000. Uh, which is actually pretty accurate, especially if you are buying in like Roseville area or coast, it's probably going to be much, much more. So keep that in mind. Um, and you know, because mortgage does have a big impact on your budget, it's actually probably one of the bigger categories in your budgets. This does make a huge difference. If we go to Zillow, let's look at what we can get for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars okay i guess we have to type it in let's do springfield missouri okay let's follow me along let's remove this boundary over here there it is so zoom out a little bit just so we can show you where springfield is on the map so see this is going to be the state of missouri right here um, Springfield is right over here in the southwest corner. There's Branson, there's Kansas City over here that's on the border between Kansas and, and Missouri. And then we also have St. Louis over here on the far right corner. But let's go back to Springfield real quick. Let's adjust our budget to $250 so you can kind of get an idea of what that can get for you as you can see there's quite a bit one more thing we're gonna do is just make it through three bedroom two bath just because that is a typical home it's available that people look for that has great resale value so we can also change this and it kind of helps you see the wider it is you you can see there is more houses that are built there these areas over here are going to be like commercial plazas so like where the uh, supermarkets are maybe commercial buildings businesses see these are little neighborhood pockets um if you zoom out and say go over here east springfield you can see that there's more empty land this is where you're gonna find properties that are on acreage okay but let's go back and look at what we can find for 250 dollars so over here is the city of Springfield. This is where there's the most houses square foot. This is South Springfield, East Springfield, North. But let's say look at a home that is listed at $250 right there. So this one over here looks like a great home. It is three bedrooms, two bathrooms, just under 1400 square foot. Looks like it's nice and moving move and ready. Has been updated. I've actually shown this home over here. It's a great home that has just been remodeled in a great area in West Springfield. So, um, great home. This one's going to be in a subdivision, so it's not going to have that much land. It might be a quarter of an acre, more or less. But this is remodeled, and this is what you can get in Springfield, Missouri. Let's see if there's anything in Ozark. This is a brand new built by Kronk Height homes in Springfield, Missouri, which is a big builder here in Springfield. Looks like there's plans from three to four bedrooms. I know there are homes for about 250. This one kind of combines them all. Let me see. And Nixa is a pretty south after um, desirable location. So this home I think is about 20 years old or so, but a cute little neighborhood. It's also three bedrooms, two bath in a subdivision that's just under 1400 also looks like it's had recent updates super cute um and then you can compare that to the region that you are currently located in and see what you can get for 250 maybe you can get a condo a townhome 
really depends on where you're coming from. So that's something to compare, you know, maybe if you live in a area like Northern California, where I used to live before, you might be able to get a fourplex that's going to be quite a bit old, that you're not going to have any privacy and things like that. It's going to be a two bedroom, I think one bath. Those are like 250, if not more right now. And they used to be quite a bit less before. So this is a huge factor in your cost of living that you should definitely consider. And I think Springfield is a great market if you're planning to become a first time home buyer, if you want to sell your home in another state and maybe work on lowering your costs, maybe you have a job opportunity here. And the good thing is that your cost of living will be less, but your ability to buy a home here should be more. It just really also depends on if you're coming with funds, what kind of job you're going to have here, as well as its salary and things like that. So just something to consider. And with that, that's gonna be it for cost of living when it comes to housing. Next on our list is going to be utilities. And that kind of makes sense because with housing, you need to have utilities uh, specifically we're going to be discussing the electric bill in order to keep your home cool at the warmer, warmer months and warm during the colder months. So according to research, Springfield, Missouri's utility bill is about 13% lower than the national average. According to findenergy.com, the current average monthly bundled electric bill for consumers of city utilities in Springfield, Missouri is $95 a month. And of course, if you were to go out of the city of Springfield and be in Rogersville, Nixa, Ozark Republic, all of these have their own utility companies. So that could change your monthly average bill. However, the Missouri average bundled bill is at $126 and the national average is $137. So Springfield is 95 and the national average is at $137. So quite a big difference. But do keep in mind the size of your home matters, the age of your HVAC, you know, your heater, all that matters. Then you have to take into consideration the local weather, you know, the time of year, what kind of utility company you have access to and their rates and your family size and your usage habits and things like that. So it can be different, you know, for one person to another someone who can buy a little home that is newer well insulated has newer appliances that's only say 1500 square foot versus 3000 square foot some are even 5000 square foot so the energy costs of those are going to be quite drastic in difference so just keep that in mind but to go back to the statistics that i found on findenergy.com the average residential electricity rate in missouri is twelve dollars and 71 cents per kilowatt which is about 20 percent lower than the national average rate of 15 dollars and 95 cents so that makes Missouri the 15th lowest price state in the United States. But do keep in mind when you're shopping for a home, these average utility might not apply based on the size of the home, the age of the home, whether HVAC unit has been updated or not, has it been serviced yearly, twice a year or however, all that comes in mind. So for myself, I feel like my utility bill in Missouri so far has been quite reasonable. I've never had an instance where I was like, whoa, this is way Way too big. I know in the recent years we had some really extreme cold weather during some of the winter months and so for some people the utility bill did jump because maybe their units are not as efficient and so they could have had a harder time keeping up and also the size of your home you know a 1500 square foot home will take much less energy typically than a home that is 3000 square feet keeping in mind that they are might be the same age you know but again there's different things that you have to keep into consideration so one person Pro tip from myself as a licensed realtor here in Missouri who is active in this market I would say that if you are interested in a home and you're concerned about the utility bills that we can definitely request the sellers to share their utility bill for say the last six months the last year or so and then that will give you a good idea of how much your utility bill might be if you do decide to purchase that home so that's something you can do but as someone who came from California the provider for 
me there was PG&E for quite some time. I am very happy with my utility bill here in Missouri. I think it's quite reasonable. It's actually very low versus in California. If you were to Google PG&E utility uh, electrical, there is quite a nightmare there. Um, I know some individuals, for example, in the city of Rockland, specifically that's going to be in Northern California in Placer County. There is quite a bit of residents there that pay five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars during some months for their electrical from PG&E just due to the recent fires and recent mishaps and just the cost of utilities there and that company kind of having a monopoly in the area. I would say that the utilities in Missouri are below the national average and the research proves it. And I think we can definitely find a home that has very reasonable electrical cost. So once again, that is gonna be the overview for utilities. It's not a fun subject, but it matter and you have to consider that. So hopefully that major decision to move to Missouri quite easier. Next on our list is going to be the cost of transportation. And once again, Missouri is winning here. It is 11% lower than the national average. So it is quite more affordable here, especially when it comes to the price of gas. I personally have experience of paying California prices and then moving to Missouri in the year of 2021. And it was quite a drastic change. Um, during that period, I had a car that needed premium only gas, unfortunately, and the car is go gone now. So that was one of the reasons, but I moved here and gas, even the premium cost of gas was much less. And if we are to go to gasprices.aaa.com, right here, we can look at the Missouri gas versus national average. So we are right here. We're going to just look at this one over here because that's what matters. So Right now it's early February of 2024 and cost of gas in Missouri is going to be $2.81 and the national cost of gas is $3.15. So Missouri is still winning in this department, maybe not a huge difference for the national average, but if you were to compare say states like, let me see if we can go to California. There you go. Yeah. So if we're going to compare say Missouri to California, where I'm originally from. Um, Missouri is at $2.81 and California is at $4.56. And keep in mind, this is just for regular gas. This is not premium gas, so it does add up. But one thing to consider if you do move to uh, Springfield, that you will need transportation here, preferably personable. You're having your own car would be best because especially if you are to live in say a location like Nixa, Ozark, Republic, Willard, Rogersville, you're gonna need a car because there's no bus routes that go from the city of Springfield to those places. So that's gonna be your best way to commute in Springfield. There are some bus routes inside the city of Springfield, but you know, that's only going to be helpful if you live inside the city of Springfield. So keep that in mind that if you do decide to move to Springfield, which I hope you do, because I think this is a great place. And if you do, please go ahead and reach out to me because I help people just like you who moved to Missouri. So I help them relocate here and find the best locations that fit their lifestyles and needs. But going back to cost of transportation, you're definitely gonna need a car and guestprices.aaa.com would be your best resource to find what the current price of gas is in Missouri or another state. And you can compare that to where you're considering moving from. And if you have a gas guzzler or a car that needs premium gas, you're gonna love it here in Missouri. So give me a call, okay? Easy access to healthcare is very important no matter where you live. With that in mind, the cost of healthcare in Springfield is only 1% lower than the national average. So if you're looking for a place that has a slightly lower cost of healthcare than this, Springfield might not be it for you. And if you find a place that has a lower healthcare cost than the national average, go ahead and comment below because I don't know if that exists. Maybe it does. I haven't really done research on that, just on Springfield. But if we were to go and look on the cost of living in Springfield, Missouri on payscale.com and just go down to the 
healthcare section over here, it shows that doctors, it shows the cost of doctor's visits, dentist visits, optometrist appointments, um, your prescription drugs, as well as your pet visits, okay? And these are pretty much in line with what is typical for the rest of the country. So you can compare if that is actually true for you or if maybe you have a higher cost of healthcare, maybe lower, let me know. But if this is not very important for you, you know, in your decision of whether you should move to Springfield or not, I think because it is very closely in line with the national average, that it doesn't quite make a difference. But on another note, if we go to healthusnews.com, you will see that Mercy Hospital, which is one of the two bigger hospitals in Springfield, as well as Cox Health, are pretty high up there, highly ranked in the state of Missouri. So Mercy Hospital in Springfield is actually number five across all hospitals in the state of Missouri, and it's considered high performing and 15 different procedures and conditions and Cox Health in Springfield is rated number 10 in Missouri and I don't know what goes into that rating so you might want to do more research on that because that could make a difference for you based on your situation but these are two of the biggest hospitals in Springfield and then if you go on Springfield Missouri map we go on to the maps um the hospitals are going to be inside the city so Cox, there's two different locations for Cox Health. There's Cox Health North um, and then Cox Health South. And then you have um, Mercy Hospital in kind of like the middle of Springfield. Um, and then there's Mercy Rehabilitation, I believe over here. Yep, so it's the Mercy Orthopedic Hospital um, in Springfield. So it's actually located, I believe this is Ozark address. Yes. Um, I, that is Ozark ad address. It's a pretty nice hospital, actually. It's very conveniently located off of the freeway. Um, so this would be where the main big hospitals are located, right here in this area of Springfield. As you can see, the city of Springfield is in this little square. There's the airport right here. So if you need to come for treatments, um, the hospitals are like right here. So depending where you land or where you settle and buy a home, um, you can calculate what your commute might be to the hospital if that's something that you need to visit regularly, often, let's just say that. <laughs> so just keep in mind the primary big hospitals are gonna be right here, but then of course you might have your little clinics and doctor's offices that are outside of this location. So that's something that we can figure out if you are planning to move here for medical treatments. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the hospitals and cost of healthcare. Alrighty, whether you want to talk about it or not, I think we need to because it does have a huge impact on your cost of living, on your personal budget, and whether you know moving to Springfield, Missouri is a smart financial move for you, and that is taxes. So the state of Missouri has different ways of obtaining its state revenue and that is through different sources of tax categories. But we're going to go back to this first here. So you might be wondering how does Missouri compare to the other 50 states in regards to uh, ranking? Well, this ranking is based on combined taxes. So it's combining things like um, income tax, sales tax, um, real estate property tax. And according to this, um, I believe it's medicinetrust.com, which I will show to you in a minute. Missouri comes as the 21st highest state tax rate in the U.S. And let's dive a little deeper and see where this calculation comes from and what kind of taxes are we talking about if you decide to move to Springfield. But we're gonna go back up. So Springfield, Missouri does, or the state of Missouri, does have state income tax. Um, however, it does have a graduated individual income tax with rates ranging up to 5.4%, and that is lower than 26 other states. So there's 24 other states that have higher state income tax. So that's a good thing. And if you go to Forbes.com, I have a little calculation for you that I would like to show you um, just for fun so you can see how much money you can keep after you know taxes are taken out. 
based on living in Missouri or living in another state. So we're gonna use $100,000 as a combined salary. We're gonna have a married filed jointly filing status just to make an easy even number. Okay, and so after you pay your federal taxes and your state income taxes over here, you're gonna be left with about $88,000, okay? And if you go, if you scroll down on Forbes.com, um, they're gonna have a little fun map for you. So Missouri is located right here. Um, so as you can see, that $100,000 turned into $88,000. Um, let's compare it to California. So I guess California is slightly better in terms of state income and federal taxes. So it has about $1,000 more left over. But do consider, remember we talked about housing prices where California's house price was over $700,000 and Missouri was only 250 or the city of Springfield only at 250, that makes a huge difference. So if you're able to retain the same kind of salary, same kind of uh, income, but maybe working remotely or having the same kind of opportunities here in Springfield um, and still having access to $100,000 per year and earnings, um, that would be a smart move for you because your cost of living in terms of your mortgage will be drastically smaller. And then you have to also consider transportation costs, you know, and utilities, all of those will be much more affordable. So for example, Texas has a higher leftover income, but their um, property taxes are quite high. So that income is gonna go towards paying your property taxes versus Missouri. Let's see, so we covered income tax, and let's, since we are on the topic of real estate property taxes, the average effective real estate property tax for the entire state of Missouri is about 0.98, which ranks 16th lowest among all US states. So not only do you have um, more affordable um, housing prices, but your property taxes are gonna be lower, and the state's median annual property tax payment is about $1,700, which is really not that much. I know in, when I was selling real estate and living in California, sometimes that could be your tax bill for the month on a property that is above the median price. So um, this could be your yearly property tax here instead. But then again, consider that it is the median and if you potentially buy a property that's going to be priced above that, that could change. And then also consider that in the state of Missouri, you have each county and city that determine the property tax rates. And for example, some of the bigger counties in Springfield are gonna be Green County, which has a 0.91% of assessed home value tax rate. Christian County comes at 0.88% and Webster County is actually my favorite. I mean, look at that tax, that tax rate is only 0.58% of the assessed home value. So if you're looking to really decrease your tax rate, Lobster County is gonna be the winning county for that. I know Christian County actually is pretty high up there, Green County as well. And then one thing to consider is, for example, in California, every time there's a home sale, that taxes will be based off the uh, sales price of that home. In Missouri, we're a non-disclosure state, so the taxes are not reevaluated every time the home sells. In fact, it is reassessed only during odd years. And so the, the appraiser from the county will go and use the sales from the prior years to get the value val, values of those property taxes um, for that odd year. So, and not all sales are reported. So a lot of times the assessor will send you a questionnaire asking you the condition of your home, the unique characteristics, you know, the bedroom count, the square footage and all that stuff. And those answers can determine your real estate property tax for your home. So just something to consider, okay? Let's go back and discuss the sales tax. Most states do have a sales tax, even some states like Tennessee, Texas, Florida, um, that do not have income tax they do have a higher sales tax. So let's see, Missouri has a sales tax that ranges from 4.7% to almost 12%. 
and an average combined state and local tax rate of 8.3% which is pretty reasonable, I think, especially with, you know, the income tax and the real estate taxes that are on the lower end, or at least, you know, in the middle of the ranking for all the 50 states. So let's go to personal property tax. This might be your first time hearing about it. For example, when I moved from California to Missouri, I was like, what is this? You know, why am I paying taxes on my personal property? I've already paid the sales tax, but that's another way of Missouri to get its revenue. And the personal property tax is taxable on personal property, which consists of motor vehicles, trailers, mobile homes, watercraft, boat motors, aircraft, livestock in some cases, um, not all cases. So you kind of have to go and check with your county to see if yours will be um, considered. Then there's farm machinery and equipment, um, agricultural crops, and any other personal property not, not exempt by law. And I always say this is the fun part. They're due on December 31st. So right after Christmas, right after you spend your money on lots of toys and gifts, right? For your families and friends and loved ones. Um, and these, uh, another thing to know is that personal property tax is typically taxed on personal property that you own on January 1st of that year. So if you were to purchase it later that year, I believe that, and you might wanna double check this, um, it's not included, but as long as it's under your ownership on January 1st, that's gonna be included on your personal uh, tax bill, okay? So get ready to pay that on December 31st. And so another thing to consider is that the newer your, say your car, your truck, your boat is, and the more it costs, the higher your bill will be for that because it's taxed on the value of it, okay? And then as it gets older and it depreciates in value, hopefully then the tax bill will go down as well. Another thing to consider is that on average, state and local governments collect um, $1,675 per capita, which is per person um, in property taxes nationwide. This is, um, research done for the year 2018 and Missouri is under the average at $1,100 per person. So we do have property taxes here, but they are a little lower. And once again, those taxes do support our local school funds, roads, our police departments, fire and emergency medical services and other services. So it is benefiting you back in other ways. It's just a way for Missouri to obtain their revenue for the state. So it's something to consider. But another thing that I love about Missouri is that even though we do have, you know, these personal taxes, licenses fees are basically non-existent or at least they're very minimal. For example, I recently registered a car. It was a new purchase for me. And so when I went to the licensing office, um, it was only about $400 for that car, but it's also based on, you know, how much you buy it for, included registration for two years instead of one. So I'd rather pay that than, you know, paying five, six, $700 in California for the DMV fees. So that's something that you should definitely compare, you know, how many toys do you have? How many cars? What age are they? How much do they cost? And then you can definitely do an assessed value of that and calculate your taxes. If you go on springfieldregion.com, outlines the personal property tax, okay? And the tax rate is gonna be $5.54 per $100 of the assessed value, but the tax is not gonna be taxed on the entire value. So the assessment rate is actually on 33% of the appraised value. So it's not gonna be on the entire value of that personal property item, okay? So there's lots of resources for this. You can go onto the county that you're considering moving to and look at their tax rates for personal property because some of them are higher, some of them be a little lower especially if you have lots of things you're going to be paying taxes on so just something to consider maybe a little rumble there but taxes are very important so there's pros and cons to taxes in missouri and hopefully that helped you make a decision i will leave all of the links to all the websites that i use to find all this information for this video and you can find it in the description below so check it out there 
If you have any further questions, give me a call and we can discuss your move here and I can point you in the right direction if you have any questions regarding things like taxes and stuff like that. Okay, and if you hanged in there, I have a bonus for you. So if you are just like me and you have littles in your family who might need childcare and daycare, we're gonna go over this category that might affect your budget and your cost of living, no matter if you're in another state or Missouri. But I have two websites, which it, they're gonna be Tutris. So it's T-O-O-T-R-I-S.com. And then there's also ProCareSolutions.com, or it's actually ProCare Solutions, but it's ProCareSoftware.com. And so those have identical numbers for childcare in Missouri. And according to these websites, the monthly cost of childcare in Missouri average on $837 for infants and $584 per month for four-year-old children. So um, I think these costs are reasonable. Um, I know childcare can be expensive and um, some other areas have childcare that is way about this this is not something that's typically included when you're in the research for the cost of living by state okay let's see so this is on the pro care solutions the national average cost of child care for 2020 was found to be to range between uh, 9,100 and 9,600 per, per year across all states. So I think Missouri is actually pretty much in line with the national average on childcare costs. So that's something to consider if you're coming from a high expense state that has very high um, child care services. But I also want to share my own experience and that is that um, I've had my two youngest in daycare here and I actually placed them in a home daycare just because I wanted a little more of a personal experience and I trusted the individual and my kids thrived there and I personally paid $5 per hour, but it was more on a on need basis. So I didn't have a monthly bill that was um, identical each month. It was more of a, hey, I need daycare today. So I was able to take them there or it's, you know, a minimum of three days a week or so. So that's how I found child care that worked for myself. I know there's other popular child care places. I think there's a little shine, shine shine that actually is great as far as I've heard. My niece actually goes there and I think they pay $1,200 per month. It's more like preschool, you know, so they're going to get a lot of education there, a lot of routine and the children, I believe, get their meals there that are included in that pricing. So it really depends on what source you use for childcare. I know in Facebook mom groups, I've seen childcare services offered as well as $125 a week. So um, that makes it what, $500 a month? But you can find different ways, you know, to reduce your childcare costs here in Missouri. So, and I think there's some very affordable option. You just have to do your research, do a great interview, find someone that you trust and are comfortable with because it's your little ones and you want to make sure they're in a positive, safe, you know, place where they can thrive and you're not worried about them. So that is something to consider when you're moving to Missouri, if you have young children who need to have access to childcare. And that concludes our video about the true cost of living in Springfield, Missouri. I hope you have found this video to be very helpful for you in your decision to move here. And if you have decided that you're moving here, I would love to help you with your move. So please give me a call, send me a text, send me an email, or we can go on Zoom and get started that way. So all the information is going to be down below in the description of this video. And if you have not yet, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications. And until the next video, I hope to see you around town.